Hello class, the purpose of this video is to help with some of your um, challenge activities. So let's take a look at this 6.2.1. It uh, looks like we have the mean height of all ninth graders. So the word all to me indicates it's a population mean. Uh, and then we have a population standard deviation. So we're going to use the Z test instead of the T test, right? We use Z when we have a population standard deviation that's known. All right, so it looks like they're asking for the average, right, X bar of these values. So we can do that in Excel. So I just opened up a quick Excel sheet, and I'm going to type in the values that you see on your screen. And to get the average, if I just type in uh, equals, A-V-E-R-A-G-E, -E -E, average, and then highlight my data, right? We're going from B2 to B9, right? Average, I press enter. So it looks like the average, or I'll just type in X bar, right? That's my average. And let's do a little formatting here. Right, so my X bar is 69.25. Okay, now it says the margin of error at 95% confidence. Um, okay, so we can again use Excel to do that for us um, with the uh, confidence.norm function. All right, so I'm going to put in here M error, margin of error. Uh, so if I type in equals, confidence.norm and then we have to enter in our alpha our standard deviation and the size so alpha uh, at a 95% confidence we would say 0 0.05 if I was at a 90% confidence this would be 0 0.1 if this was 99% confidence it would be a 0 0.01 okay uh, let's see here standard deviation was given that was six inches right it was given here and the number of people i believe were seven seven students let me just double check oopsie i made a mistake eight students right the height of eight students so i'm going to change this seven to an eight and just pause for a second oh there it is just so you see the formula up here all right so that's my margin of error so I'm going to put in 4.158. Okay. Now to get the lower and upper levels for my confidence out interval, right? I need the upper bound and the lower bound. Again, I want to make this a little bigger. All right. So we're going to have the lower bound and an upper bound. And to do that, it's uh, X bar plus the margin of error and an X bar minus the margin of error. Right, so to get the lower, I'm going to say equals. Here's my X bar minus my margin of error. And to get the upper limit, you're going to say equals X bar plus the margin of error. Press enter. Right, so those are my, those are my uh, upper and lower limits. All right, so let's enter the lower limit first. Uh, looks like they go two decimal places, so 4.1. One six, and I think I made a boo boo. Yeah, I did. The lower limit should be sixty five point zero nine. Okay, and then the upper limit was seventy three point four one. And I just want to double check one more time. I think that looks good. So I think we can check our work here. Let's check. And we have all green check marks. It looks like we do. Okay, and then here's a little blurb. I'll leave this on your screen for three seconds if you wanted to copy anything down. And then we could take a look at the next problem. Okay, next problem, 6.22. All right, so they gave us a table with a lot of good information here. So it looks like there's a car company and they're testing transmissions. And they want to know how long does the transmission in your car last? 
So this company is going to make a claim. They're saying our transmission is good for 150,000 miles. That would be great, right? You don't want to replace your transmission any sooner than that. So what is P? So the, first of all, it's important to know that this is a one-tail test and it's a right-tail test because the uh, shaded area is on the right side. If a shaded area was only on the left side, this would be a left-tail test, which is still a one-tail test. And if I had shades on both sides, it would be a two-tail test. All right, so my p-value for a one-tail test is 0 0.033, right, and that's coming straight from the table, p-value for a one-tail test. Uh, my t-value, here's my t-stat, 1.889, and what else do we have? What condition is met for the t-distribution? So I'm looking at my degrees of freedom. And it's 43, so that means my N is 44. So my sample size is larger than 30. How do I know that? Well, if the degrees of freedom is 43, we know N minus one, oops, is uh, your degrees of freedom. So my N has to be 44, right? And my degrees of freedom would be one less, which is 43. Uh, the mean X bar is 151.2. And the degrees of freedom would be 40, wait a minute, n minus 1, 43, right? Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. And my standard deviation, it doesn't look like they give it to us, but I know the square root of the variance, right? So if the variance is 17.22, my standard deviation is equal to the square root of my variance. So in this case, uh, it would be 4.15. And I just want to make sure I have enough zeros. Yep, 4.15. And just going to double check one more time. So I think we did it. I'm going to press check answer, and I don't see any red marks, so that's a good sign. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.